Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will look at maximum absolute sum of any subarray problem which is from lead code number 1749. A prerequisite before watching this is to watch my video on cadence algorithm. So the link will be in the description below. In this problem we will be looking at two approaches and one of them will be based on cadence algorithm. Let's now read the problem statement. You are given an integer array nums. The absolute sum of the subarray from L to R is absolute value of all the elements if, if you sum it from L to R and you take the absolute value that will be considered as the absolute sum of the subarray from L to R. Return the maximum absolute sum of any subarray of nums. Note that the ABS of X is defined as follows. If X is a negative integer uh, then ABS of X equals minus X and if X is a non-negative integer then ABS of X equals X. Now if you look at uh, one example like let's say if you look at the second example then in this particular case uh, how do we find the maximum absolute sum of any subarray now if i just remove this word absolute sum right and i say that maximum sum subarray you want to find maximum sum subarray then this is the same problem as the cadence algorithm because the cadence algorithm is used to find the maximum sum subarray right so what you can do here is Actually, in the brute force approach, you can try generating all the possible subarrays, which will be of order of n square, and then uh, track the maximum sum. And definitely, the nums length is 10 to the power of 5 maximum, and that is why an n square algorithm will be 10 to the power of 10, which is way beyond your 10 to the power 8. So, it will not run in one second. Now, as we have already noticed, that the maximum sum subarray problem is the cadence algorithm. Therefore, we can apply the cadence algorithm on this and try to find the maximum sum subarray. But if you apply the cadence algorithm, then it will be giving you the maximum sum to be 3 only, right? But the answer is not 3, it is 8. So what we can do? Actually, there is an additional concept of absolute sum. That means, even if you try to find the minimum sum subarray, minimum sum subarray, in any of the subarray find the minimum sum and in any of the subarray find the maximum sum subarray. The maximum sum subarray is a concept of positive numbers, right? That means you want to maximize the sum of the subarray and we know that uh, we will be trying to be as positive as possible. But the minimum sum subarray is a concept of negative sum which means that I will try to minimize the sum as much as possible and try to reach towards minus infinity, right? Maximum sum subarray tries to go towards plus infinity. Minimum sum subarray tries to go towards minus infinity. But according to the problem, I am not concerned about negative or positive value because let's say that on this given subarray, the minimum sum subarray value would be this minus 5 plus 1 minus 4, which will be minus 8. And the maximum sum subarray value will be 3, let's say. Then out of these two, we know that minimum sum subarray is minus 8 and maximum sum subarray is 3. I will not be considering 3, but I will be weighing the option which one to pick, minus 8 or 3, because I can always convert it by the absolute function to a positive number. You know, what we have to do is find out the minimum sum subarray, then find out the maximum sum subarray, and take the maximum of both these options because there is an absolute function which is allowed to calculate the sum, isn't it? So this will be our first solution, first optimal solution because that will run in order of n time. So the first solution is based on the cadence algorithm. I have already written the main part of the code of cadence algorithm. And if you look at the given array, then on this, we can just follow the code. I will show you a dry run of how to calculate the maximum sum subarray. So I'll be taking a current sum equals zero, maximum sum equals minus infinity. And I will be starting with the first value. As soon as you see the element, you just add it to the current sum and then compare current sum and maximum sum since the maximum sum is small so i'll be updating this to current sum now check if the current sum is less than zero then reset it to zero but it is not less than zero so we are fine if you look at minus five just add it this becomes minus three compare current sum with maximum sum maximum sum is larger so no change will happen now since the current sum is less than minus three initialize it to zero again move ahead and this is one add one now compare current sum with max sum no change will happen one is greater than a zero so it is fine let's check this uh, minus four minus four added will make it minus three so minus three and two will be compared no change to two and since minus three is less than zero reinitialize it to zero 
now for 3 3 gets added here 3 is larger than 2 so the max sum will become 3 now and since 3 is greater than equals to 0 so no update minus 2 this makes it 1 1 compared with 3 no change at all and 1 is greater than equals to 0 so no update in the current sum and we are done once we are done with uh, the parsing from left to right side then the maximum sum will give me the maximum sum sub array right so this is 3 okay we have found the maximum sum sub array but we need to find the minimum sum sub array as well so how do we find it so there are two ways to find it the first way is actually to change this piece of code right where you try to minimize the value instead of trying to maximize the maximum try to minimize the maximum right that is one way but what i will do is i will reuse the same piece of code and that is why i can just convert this array by multiplying each of the element with minus one so if you do that this will be the changed values right now if you do the same run again from left to right the second time i am not doing it will be exactly the same then you will find that this sub array here is giving you the maximum sum which is 8 so the maximum sum that you get from the right hand side will be 8 right now you compare this 8 and 3 and whichever one is maximum you just return it as an answer right so maximum sum sub array is straightforward from the given array while to find minimum sum sub array you have to either change the code and write another cadence algorithm where you try to uh, minimize the maximum by using the min function right and uh, whenever the current sum is greater than zero then set it to zero something like that or otherwise another approach is to convert the entire array by multiplying by minus one and then apply the same piece of code to find the maximum sum sub array right so i have done the second technique by multiplying with minus one because it lets me use the same cadence algorithm code okay now this is the first technique the time complexity is order of n because we are parsing the entire array three times and the space complexity will be order of one now let's look at the second technique now the second technique is based on tracking the highest and the lowest prefix sum value well if you consider this given array it is the same example uh, then what do i mean by prefix sum what is the prefix sum prefix sum is the sum value from index 0 to a given point isn't it so if i try to calculate the prefix sum and try to plot a graph then this graph i have already plotted here if you uh, start with 0 we will always be starting some value with 0 and add 2 you will reach to 2 add minus 5 you reach to minus 3 add 1 you reach to minus 2 add minus 4 you reach to minus 6 add 3 you reach to minus 3 add 2 you reach to minus 1 okay so this is the cumulative sum or the prefix sum from left to right now if i tell you that what will be the maximum sum sub array in this case so i want to find a contiguous run of items which will be giving me the maximum sum maximum sum or the minimum sum right so in this case i will be considering absolute values so these two have the same meaning and that is why i will be taking let's say maximum sum how to find this out i have already plotted the graph then the maximum sum sub array will be take straight line which will be pointing to the highest point and the lowest point and the gap in between this will always be the maximum sum sub array okay now our goal is to find out what is this gap and how to find it out so in order to do that what i will be doing is i will be using the maximum prefix sum and the minimum prefix sum so the maximum prefix sum will be tracking the highest point and the minimum prefix sum will be tracking the lowest point and after parsing all the indices uh, we will be just returning the difference between them as the maximum sum sub array let me just show you how it is done so for the first value we have 2 now calculate the prefix sum so the prefix sum will start at 0 and if 2 is added it will become 2 check the maximum prefix sum is it larger than 2 no so update this to 2 minimum prefix sum is it larger than 2 no so don't update it right i want to minimize the minimum prefix sum maximize the maximum prefix sum minus 5 so this will become minus 3 now max prefix sum will not increase because i want to maximize it minus 3 is smaller min prefix sum will become minus 3 okay fine you see this one one will be added and this becomes a minus 2 so this will not change and this will also not change because minus 2 is larger now if you add minus 4 to it this becomes a minus 6 now this will not change 2 is already larger and this will be changing to minus 6 because minus 6 is smaller 
now go to this 3 3 will be added this becomes minus 3 2 is larger so it will not change minus 6 is smaller so this will not change 2 so this becomes minus 1 2 is larger so it will not change minus 6 is smaller so it will not change and we are done at the end you know the highest point and the lowest point take the difference between the highest and lowest point max prefix sum minus uh, min prefix sum so 2 minus of minus 6 will be coming out to be 8 and therefore 8 is the answer right now this may sound tricky but if you know the properties of prefix sum then i think it should be clear now so the time complexity in this case is order of n and we have exactly done one parse and the space complexity is order of one let's now look at both the codes if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number if we look at the cadence algorithm then we are given the nums and i will be finding the maximum sum sub array this is the code for finding the maximum sum sub array using the cadence algorithm after that i will be flipping all the signs by multiplying all the elements with minus one and again i will be uh, finding out the maximum sum sub array using the cadence algorithm and since i have flipped all the signs it will become minimum sum sub array and then we will be returning the maximum between the maximum sub array and the min sum sub array right this was technique number one using cadence algorithm if you look at the prefix sum then in this case we are just trying to track the min point and the max point that means the min prefix sum and the max prefix sum and the prefix sum will be adding up all the values so i'll just iterate through all the items prefix sum will be adding the current element and then try to minimize the min point try to maximize the max point once you are done iterating through all the items then return max point minus min point that means max prefix sum minus min prefix sum which is the highest point and the lowest point difference value right which we are calculating which i told you the gap items right the gap between the highest and the lowest point so these are the two approaches and i hope it is clear if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you